In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve common Hess's Law problems. The two common forms of Hess's Law that you'll need to use for problems are here and here. I want to start with the one that's boxed in red. So this basically says the overall enthalpy of a reaction is equal to the overall enthalpy of the products minus the overall enthalpy of the reactants. So the way that you apply this to problems is you'll commonly be given a list of chemical equations with their associated enthalpies or delta H's and then you'll be given a final equation and asked for its delta H. So the trick to these problems is you somehow have to manipulate the given equations and add them together to make them look like this. So I've already got all the work written on the board here but I want to carefully walk you through this. So I said I have to manipulate these equations that I was given to add them together to make them look like this. But what are the rules for manipulating these equations? Well, number one, I can flip an equation. So in other words, I can take the products of one reaction, make them into the reactants, take the reactants and make them into the products. I can flip any reaction I need to. Number two, I can multiply or divide by whatever number I need to, to change the stoichiometric coefficients to the number I need. And these are going to have resultant effects on the enthalpy of each reaction that I'll have to account for at the end. So whenever I start a problem like this, I look at my reactants and I see, okay, I need a 3NO2 in my reactants for my final equation that I want my enthalpy for. So do I see an NO2 anywhere in my sample equations? Well, yeah, I've underlined the only NO2 we find right here. The problem is it's on the product side. I need it on the reactant side. So the first thing I'll have to do is flip this first equation. And since this is a two and this is a three, I'll have to multiply this whole equation by three over two, multiply this whole equation by three over two to change this two into a three. So that was the first thing I did down here. I flipped this first equation, so now 2NO2 is in the reactant side, and these reactants are on the product side, and then I multiplied it by 3 over 2. So you can see now that I have my 3NO2 on my reactant side, just like I need. So I'm slowly inching towards this final equation. So what's the next thing I should do? Well, if you notice, I divided the second equation by 2. And let's see why I did that. So I noticed I needed an HNO3 in my product side. And I see that the only HNO3 in my sample equations appears right here. But it's a 4 instead of a 2. So this time I didn't have to flip anything. It's already on the product side like I need it. But it's got a 4 instead of a 2. So I went ahead and divided this second equation by 2. Which is the same thing as multiplying it by 1 half. So when I multiply all of these stoichiometric coefficients by one half, this is the result I get right here. So now I have my two HNO3 on my product side, just like I need. So I'm getting closer to my answer. Now I have this three NO2 on my reactant side and this two HNO3 on my product side. Okay, so what do I do next? I have some things on my reactant side, if you notice here, that I don't need. I have an N2 here that doesn't appear on my reactant side. Additionally, I have a 5 halves O2 here that doesn't appear on my reactant side. And remember, at the end, I'm going to add all of these together and hope to end up with this. So I need to somehow cancel these out. And you can see I've done that, but how did I get there? Well, you see here that I have an N2 and an O2 on the reactant side of the third equation. If I flip the third equation, now these reactants are on the product side. Here I have an N2 that will cancel out with this N2, and now I have an O2 that will add with this 3 halves O2 over here to cancel out with this 5 halves O2. So it's not obvious to see that. You may have to pause the video, stare at this problem for a while, write it out yourself, and really work at it because this is the hardest Hess's Law problem you may actually see. But if you can do this one, you'll be able to do all of them. So now I've canceled out this N2 with this N2, this O2 and 3, o, 3 halves O2 with this 5 halves O2. And you notice here I have an NO and an NO that can cancel out. 
but I have two over here and three over here. So this two will cancel out and then I can cancel out two of these. So I'll be left with one NO. So finally, when I add all of these together, I'll be left with three NO2 plus this H2O goes to two HNO3 plus NO. Now I have my final desired equation. So now I have to go back and see what did I have to do to these given equations to manipulate them to get here. Well, to the first one, I had to flip it and multiply by three halves. So for the first equation, the enthalpy started out as negative 116. So when I flip it, I have to multiply that by negative one to reverse the sign of the enthalpy. Secondly, I have to multiply it by three halves because I multiplied the equation by three halves. So now the enthalpy for this reaction is positive 174 kilojoules. For the second equation, I had to divide it by two, which is the same thing as multiplying by one half. So it went from negative 256 kilojoules to now negative 128 kilojoules. The third equation, all I had to do was flip. So I took 183 kilojoules and multiplied it by negative one because I have to reverse the sign of delta H whenever I flip an equation. Now I'm left with negative 183 kilojoules for this reaction. Finally, Hess's law says, I add all of these enthalpies together to get my final enthalpy for this equation. And it turned out to be negative 137 kilojoules. So not an easy problem. Please take some time to work this out yourself and understand it. But like I said, this is one of the harder problems you'll see. Okay, now let's see an example where we can use this second form of Hess's law. This one still tells you about the overall enthalpy of the reaction, but it uses bond energies. That's what BE stands for. So it says the sum of the bond energies of the reactants this time, notice how this time it's reactants, minus the sum of the bond energies of the products. So when we have bond energies of reactants and we want a chemical reaction to happen, we have to break apart the reactants, right? We have to break their bonds. So here bonds are broken and this costs energy. We have to put energy in to do this. Conversely, in the products, we're forming bonds to make new products. And this actually releases energy, it gives off energy into the surroundings. So let's do an example here. I wrote out an equation, 2CH4, plus O2 goes to 2CH3OH, and I wanna know the overall enthalpy of this reaction, and we're gonna do that using bond energies. So I wrote out the chemical structures of each molecule here in this reaction, and they look like this. We have two methanes, CH4, plus an O2, goes to two CH3OH, it looks like this. So think about this like a game of Lego blocks. How are we gonna take these shapes and make them into these shapes? So we've got a CH4 here, but you can see here it's CH3OH. So the first thing we're gonna have to do is break two of these CH bonds. We're gonna have to rip off two of these H's and then break apart this O2, tack on an O to each of the C's and then tack on an H on top of that, right? So let's think about that in terms of bonds broken minus bonds formed. So if we're talking about bonds broken, I've got that written right here. So I said we're gonna have to break two of these CH bonds, right? So two times the bond energy of CH, I've got a table of bond energies right here and you can just find this on a table. And the bond energy of CH is 413 kilojoules per mole. So I'm gonna to have to input two times 413 kilojoules per mole to break those two CH bonds. Then I'm gonna to have to also break this O2 apart so that I can tack on individual oxygens onto this carbon bond. So this is gonna go into my bonds broken parentheses. So this is gonna be one times the bond energy of O2, which is 146 kilojoules per mole. So when I do 413 times two plus 146, I'll get the total energy of my bond energy for my reactants, for the bonds we have to break. Now let's start talking about the bonds we have to form. So now we have these two H's floating around here. We broke them off. 
and now we have these two oxygens floating individually. So now we're gonna have to make two CO bonds, right? We're gonna make one and we have two of these, so we'll make another. So the first thing I'll do is I'll add in the energy formed, the energy released when I make two CO bonds. So each CO bond is worth 358 kilojoules per mole. So I'll do 358 times two, plus now I'm gonna tack on an H to each one of those oxygens. Remember, this is all happening twice. We have two of each of these. So I'll add in two times OH, the bond energy of OH, and that's 463 kilojoules per mole. So 358 times two plus 463 times two, these are my bonds formed, the energy of the bond energy of the products. This is the energy released into the surroundings. So if I do all of this minus all of this, I'll have the overall enthalpy of the reaction, and that's negative 670 kilojoules per mole. So this is an exothermic reaction. It gives off energy into the surroundings. One more important note I'd like to make is about bond energy versus bond length. So when you have increasing bond numbers, so you have a single bond here, a double bond here, and a triple bond here, the bonds become progressively stronger and shorter. So it's much harder to break apart a triple bonded carbon bond than it is a single bond between carbons. This bond is worth 839 kilojoules per mole. So if you wanted to break this bond, you would have to put in 839 kilojoules per one mole of C triple bonded to C. This bond is also shorter than these two bonds. These carbons are closer together and that's why it's harder to break their bond. So I really hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, please feel free to hit that thumbs up button on YouTube. It really helps me out and I'll see you guys in the next video.